Sup, I'm Blair. I'm a professional composer, and today I'm going to show you how to print perfect stems in Logic every single time. So picture this. You're at the end of a great session. You've written an awesome piece of music, or you've produced a great song uh, for, your, for your artist, and now it's time to print stems, and you just can't be bothered. It is such a difficult process in Logic. Everybody says you can't print stems in Logic. This is absolutely ridiculously hard to do. You have to go through this terrible process of, of recording audio and bussing it to a million different things. That's false. It's all false. There are some really, really wonderful ways to print stems in Logic really easily. And uh, the best way to do this is through three steps that I'm going to show you how to do right now. Step one, organize your session beforehand. <laughs> okay, so if you're completely throwing things together, then yes, there's going to be some organization done at the end of the process for you. But let me show you real quick. Let's hop into a piece of music that I've just recently composed. Now, I'm going to show you like five seconds of this, uh, and I'll link the video so you can watch it. So this is a piece of music that I just recently composed for a film that I'm working on. Uh, it turned out really well. The whole thing was supposed to be like Ghostbusters meets Harry Potter. And I had a super fun time with it. Now, but the thing that I really want you to pay attention to on this is what's going on over here. Now, in Logic, you can't have your track windows be different than your mixer windows, so you can't set up uh, stems like you might in other, uh, in other DAWs in Logic, what you see in your track window is going to be the way that your stems are printed. So how do I do this? Um, first, I worry about naming. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up my stems. I'm going to get rid of everything that's not a stem printing uh, track, and then I'm going to pull up everything that is a stem printing track. And you see in my template hidden here, I have a bunch of oddly named tracks. And these are all aux tracks, as you can see if I open up um, all of these aux tracks here in my mixer. Now, what I'm doing here is I am taking advantage of the way that uh, things are named uh, within the Mac system. And I'm going to show this to you in a very specific way here. Here's the actual project file from that film, that queue for that film. And here's what has happened. When I have printed all of these, because of the way that I have them named, they automatically sort into a hierarchy when I print them to my stem folder within that, uh, within that file, within that project. And what's happening is these bracketed folders are getting automatically sorted to the bottom. The underscored folders, or the underscored aux tracks, uh, are being sorted into stems, and then the double underscored folders are being sorted into what I call macro stems, and that's generally what I would send to like the editor of a film. And so what I'm doing here is I'm bracketing any main folder or main aux track from my template. Other than that, anything that I'm playing, any instrument that I have, any audio that I'm recording is going to be inside of one of these folders. Now, I don't have nested folders, and I'll go into that a little bit, why that is. Uh, I like having everything just laid out all at once. So this, these are all of my brackets. These are all of my folders, and they just kind of hang out. Then, each of those is bussed. And those buses are, first, my main stems. 
So for instance, woodwinds, all of woodwinds you'll see are bussed to 162. And 162 is my woodwind high stem. And then I'm guessing 163 is my woodwind low stem, right? Um, so, so on and so forth. Every single one of my folders is bussed to a stem, an aux track. And then every one of those aux tracks is bussed to another aux track. And so let's do another example. Woodwind high stem is bussed to 194 which is my woodwind macro stem. So because of the way that I have these things named, when I press export at the end of my session, it just boop, it just pops everything out perfectly. Now, you don't need to be a film composer to do it this way, right? You could have um, making sure that everything in your pop song gets put into a track stack, a summing track stack. Um, you know, and maybe one of those track sacks is lead vocal. Another track sack is is uh, background vocal. And then you bus those to an underscored aux track called vocals, right? And so you get, you get basically, uh, you know, four, five, six, seven main stems that you're bouncing everything in your song to. And so you're doing this sort of interesting... Uh, routing and busing technique that's going to make it so, so easy, and especially, especially um, for film composing folks, but also for pop producers, um, or really whatever kind of producer you are, if you set some things out into track stacks in your template and then just build things out within those track stacks as you're writing, instead of just pulling up a million different files, uh, it's going to make your life so, so so much easier. Now, the second thing that I do that makes this whole thing so easy, uh, and this is step number two, is key commands. So you'll see how I can really easily take some instruments away and put some tracks back and just do that so on and so forth forever. Um, and what I'm doing here and this is tip number two, is set up your key commands. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Option K, and that's going to, to set up key commands. And the way that I'm doing this is that anything that is a non-stem object within my template, something that I want normally as I'm writing, uh, you know, like my click, for instance, or a VCA fader handling the volume of my entire mix. That's a really valuable thing to have. But I don't particularly want a track being printed at the end of the process that says MX, that's empty, that will do nothing, right? Um, and so I'm just getting rid of that. And so the way that I'm doing that is anything within this this kind of milieu of instruments that I have is going to go to a group. And that group I'm calling non-print. And then once I'm in my key commands, I'm gonna type in group on the search bar up here. And I can toggle hide any one of my groups. So we saw that was group four my non-stem printing group is group four. So I have that set to shift control option command N and I use N for non-stems. And then you can see here, I've got a few. I've got, I've got this other command X for extras within my session, you know, instruments that I want to have, but I don't particularly want all the time. I've got S for stem printing tracks. Uh, and then I have uh, M for mic positions. And that'll be it another part of my template video we'll talk about a lot later. Uh, and so because I have those key commands set up, I can very easily get rid of non-stem printing instruments and then show my stem printing tracks. That's it. And so uh, all you're gonna do from that point on, and this is step number three, is 
select all in your session. I have it I have it set to shift control option command A to sec, select all the tracks within the main window. Um, and what's important here, keep in mind, these tracks need to be highlighted. Whatever is in your window here in these track stacks, it does need to be highlighted. If let's say this is highlighted, but these down here are not, for some reason, it doesn't work. I don't know why they designed it that way. It's just how it works. So I'm going to select all of the tracks in my main window. Again, bring up your key commands and I'll type in right here, select all tracks. And you'll see main window tracks, select all tracks. I've got it, shift control option command A. And so I'll do that. And then I'm just, all I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command E. And it brings up my export window. And so right now we're on the STEM printing video and we're going to bounce here. Very, very important, trim the silence file at the end, right? You don't want to, you don't want to have a bunch of empty tracks in your session. You just don't want that. So we're going to trim silence file at end. We're going to, uh, I'll include audio tail right now, but you don't have to do that. I'm going to include the volume and pan automation. Very important. I don't want to bypass effect plugins. And then I, in this case, if I'm sending it to another composer or a collaborator or somebody like that, I will include the tempo information so that they can just drop these stems into their project and bam, it'll populate with the right tempo. That's perfect. Right now, I don't need that. Uh, I'm going to take overload protection off. I've done a great job in this session of, of making sure that my levels are balanced. I don't want logic to change that. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that my naming is great. Uh, so right now it shows me an example of my file name, uh, 2412 stem printing video, and then it shows me one of the tracks that it's going to print. Um, now sometimes I might want to put something custom in here, like, like version two or something simple like that. And so I have this set up so that I can do that exactly that way. Now, uh, this is not going to be a long process most of the time. Most of the time you're just going to press export, look and make sure this stuff is all set up, and then you're going to do it. Now, as I press export here, uh, this is about a three minute track, maybe a four minute track. Um, I'll go ahead and time it and just see. But generally speaking, doing all of this printing takes about half the time that, um, that it does to just play through the track once. And so to put that in perspective, uh, setting this up in the way that so many other people set up their, their STEM printing um, is going to take 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Um, for me, it's going to look like this. Get rid of non-STEM printing. Get show the stems. Select all the tracks. Press export. Make sure that my correct options are enabled here and export. That's the whole process. So like I said, this is about three minutes of music. Generally speaking, like I said, it takes about half the time. So my guess is that it's gonna take about a minute. So we'll wait and I'll see how long it takes. All right, so that took about four minutes. So that one took almost the exact length of the session. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised. This was a super heavy session. I guess most of the time I'm printing stuff that's a little bit lighter than this. Um, and so you'll see that as I've printed that, all that's happened here is that it has, it has populated my bounce folder with a hierarchy of stems. You've got macro stems, you've got your normal stems, highs and lows, and then you've got your individual folders. And so this would be something that I would send to um, a mixer for a film. This is maybe something that I would send to somebody who's doing some stem mixing for me. Uh, and this is something who I would send to like, if 
you know, Dennis Sands was mixing my music or something and I wanted to give him uh, access to every single individual uh, track of the session. I might do this or I might even stem this out even further and I might, instead of doing what I just showed you guys, I might do this instead where I literally open up every single track and then I'll press my all command there and it selects everything. And then that will actually, since the way that I have these named, I've got these named so that they will populate in the correct order, take a look at these tracks, um, then I will get individual tracks underneath even these, uh, these individual folders. What's the one thing that you should never do? Never print stems by audio. And now some people will be like, Blair, this is, this is what I do. It works great. Um, so let me show you an example of what that might look like. So let me take an instrument here and I'm going to route this so that I get some signal from one of my, one of my instruments. So stem printing for a lot of people would look like this, create an audio track or a set of audio tracks and then record your session to those audio tracks. You're left with this stem, which has got an audio from my, I think my synth high folder, right? And then you're gonna take those and you're going to export those. So there's a couple of really big problems with that. One, empty audio. If you set up uh, stem printing in the way that I've set it up here, you're going to have oodles and oodles of empty audio tracks that you yourself personally are going to have to comb through and get rid of. That sucks. It takes time. Uh, you don't, you want to spend your time being creative and you don't want to spend four hours at the end of the process combing through empty audio. Um, the other thing is that it doubles your time at the end. You have to print all of your stems in audio in the session. And every single time I've done this, I hear things in my session that I want to change. I stop printing the stems and then I go back. I change the audio that I wanted to change. And then I, you know, go back to printing the stems again. And then I hear another thing that I want to change. And I just keep doing that forever and ever. And maybe that's just me, um, but it doesn't work for me. It's not good. Uh, and so you have to wait for that process of, of all of the stems to print to audio like this, and then you have to go through the process of uh, of exporting the audio, right? So you export audio files. Export one region as audio files, so you would do that to 20 regions or however many stems you've printed. And um, then you have to wait for that to export. So basically, you're doing the exact same process that I'm doing, except you're adding in a step of recording all of the audio, and you're making it so that you have to find all of these empty uh, audio files and get rid of them. Uh, and some people have done really complicated things like like literally like write code or set up things on, on a stream disk where they can find empty audio files on their computer and get rid of them or within a particular folder. Look, great, but why not just like cut it off at the source and just have stem printing be really easy <laughs> instead of making it really difficult. <laughs> and so that is the one thing that I'd say, just don't do that, especially if you're in logic. It's going to cost you more time than it's worth. This is going to be so much easier in the long run. Just do this. So that's all I have to say today. Leave me some comments. Let me know uh, what you think. And, uh, and let me know what else you want to see about my template. Uh, and uh, man, I, I hope you have a good one. Happy composing. <laughs>